I grew up in Lane Cove, a suburb of Sydney. I'm one of eight children and I'm the second youngest. My dad was a builder and my mum, well I was one of eight kids so she was a full-time stay-at-home mum. Lane Cove is a really nice suburb to grow up in and so was my street. I guess you could say it was a busy street because lots of families lived in it. We had a national park at one end and there was always heaps of kids to play with. Sometimes playing in one big gang or a few of us off on bikes. We'd stay over at each other's houses and it was just heaps of fun. All in all, it felt like I had a really great life. I loved school. My mum used to say to me, Of all the kids, Darren, you're my smartest one. You're going to be so successful when you grow up. And talk about the teacher's pet. The teachers loved me. Darren, they'd say, go and do this for me, please. Yes, miss. Darren, take this to the office. Yes, miss. Darren, do your homework. Yes, mum. I always did what I was told. Kids in Catholic families generally do. When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a doctor. I was going to save lives and sew limbs back on and make people feel better. But as I got older, I realised that I just couldn't settle. So instead of going on to Year 12, I hopped out of school at Year 10 and joined the Army. I guess I thought in the Army I'd get respect. People would recognise that the Army was a hard road, but that I was up for it. The Army made sense. It was organised and there was discipline. And I didn't really have to think too much for myself. I met Sonia through her brother, who was a friend of mine. We met at the RSL, which is where we'd all go, have a few drinks and play the pokies. I wasn't interested in her at first, but she chased me. But we got together and I thought, this is pretty cool. Here's someone who loves me and doesn't care that I'm pushing my wage packet into the slots and I loved her for that. When I found out she was pregnant, I thought, well, we better get a flat together. When my daughter was born, it was the happiest day of my life. They'd handed this tiny little bundle over to me and I stood there looking into her eyes feeling so proud of this little person. I so loved this little girl. And I whispered down to her, I'm always going to be there for you and I'm always going to keep you safe, protect you. That's my promise to you. I thought I was a really good dad. I used to call Sonia during the day to see how she was going. When I get home from work, I'd give little Taylor a bath. On Fridays, I'd always pull over at a flower shop on my way home, pick up a bunch of flowers. I'd stop at the pub, pick up a few beers, get some takeaway for us, and things were pretty good. I'm not saying there weren't hard times. There always are in relationships. But we work things out. I came home one Friday night opened the door and I thought to myself, shit, where's the fridge? Because that's the first thing you see when you walk into our place, and I couldn't see it. And then I went into the lounge, and everything was gone. Same in the bedroom, and the bathroom. I went back into the kitchen, and right in the middle of the room was the contents of the fridge sitting there in an esky and my clothes piled in a corner. I was devastated. And to this day, I still am. Because you see... I didn't pick it. That morning, it just felt like every other morning. As I'd left the house, I'd said, I love you, see you tonight. And she'd said, I love you too, see you later. And off I'd gone. I didn't know what to do. All I can say is thank God that esky had beer in it. I rang her mother and she said, She doesn't want to talk to you, don't call here again. But I kept calling. And her father would say, Fuck off, you dickhead. I'm going to make sure that you never see your kid again. A few days later, police knocked on my door and handed me a piece of paper. The restraining order. God, I nearly fell over. I found out from a friend she was telling everyone that I used to beat her up, that I'd abused my daughter. None of which was true, but how was I going to convince them of that? I thought, what's going on? Why is this happening? I wouldn't hurt Sonia or Taylor. I tried to fight it through the courts, but the family court is no place to try and get justice. I should have been strong and said, this is not true. But how do you do that, me with legal aid, her with her Macquarie Street barrister? I couldn't work out how to make the judge see that it was all lies. And I just had this major meltdown. During all the legal battles, I was working all day. 
drinking myself stupid at night, putting what I wasn't throwing down my throat back into the pokies. I was using anything I could get my hands on to help me black out the pain. I could not stop my head from trying to work out why. My mind was going a million miles an hour and I couldn't sleep. I used to walk up and down the street just pacing all night all the time wondering what I had done wrong, sometimes believing it was my fault, trying to work out what my part was in her story. And all the time I was thinking about Sonia and Taylor, about betrayal and justice, wondering how I could fulfil the promise I made to Taylor to take care of her, to protect her, and wondering how Darren, little Darren, who'd always done what he was told, he kept the secrets. It ended up here. And finally, I started to remember. And I started wondering who Sonia might leave Taylor with if she had things to do on her own.